So last week I uploaded a video talking about how like books need to look cooler and stuff like that. Uh, ju just because, you know, people just aren't reading as much, or at least the younger generations are. How like, you know, high schoolers now, middle schoolers, like some of these kids don't even know how to like write their names. It's kind of ridiculous. And the only reason why I would know this is because my mom happens to be a teacher. She teaches sixth grade. Hearing what she goes through, it, it honestly baffles me because my mom was very strict on me like getting my education like that was a very big thing like for me and her because well for f first of all like my grandfather he was an immigrant my uncle and my mom are the first people in our family to get a college degree so for me you know <laughs> i'm i have very big uh expectations now personally i am getting my degree currently like i've talked about it before how i'm going to school before i get off topic books right so one of the books i showed when i was you know trying to like make examples of how to make it look cooler is this book right here ruination uh obviously it's league of legends uh type book uh and it talks about one of the characters viego now viego is like this edgy like guy where basically he was a king and he was basically brought back to life that that's basically just a summary and he just he basically ruins in a more clear sense the world to bring back his dead wife you know on the surface level it's just okay that's his character that's who he is you know once you start reading lore tabs you're like oh wow so this guy actually used to be a ruler he ru he ruled with his wife he loved her so very much and all of a sudden his wife you know died we didn't really know how she died but she died and he wanted to resurrect her or not resurrect her but like you know help her before she died not die right so they found this place called the blessed isles which is now the shadow isles right so we found that out when he first came out we were like how did how did the blessed isles turn into the shadow isles why why was the shadow isles used to be called blessed isles so there was like you know mystery with, with that there was a whole event that should have explained everything but didn't it was just a reason to sell more skins not surprising so you know i wanted to get this book because when the event first came out you know they dropped that little uh game the uh the ruined king and stuff like that i was more interested in this i was very interested in this because i knew that this would have been more in depth on what it was like for viego so this book is basically what viego was like before all the ruination stuff and you know me being halfway more than halfway through the book i think i'm qualified to you know put, put my inner thoughts on it first things first going into this book i didn't realize that viego is not the main character now what i mean by that is this book is written in the point of view of Callista, majority of the time at least there are other characters that has their own point of views, but most of the time so far has been Callista's point of view. And it's very interesting to see it from her point of view because what she does in this book and how they portray her personality and emotions, it, it seems very con contradicting of who she is in game. Now, we could just write it up to the fact that she is technically ruined in the game so she's more of like an i guess an evil like uh manifestation of herself like it like how um all of her like evil thoughts and stuff are like magnified more and it just it overtakes her other parts of herself you know what i'm trying to say so seeing herself like as who she is 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 very refreshing in a way and it's very cool to see um she's she honestly she's actually a very likable like character like i didn't expect myself to like her character that much you know in league of legends i was like oh you know unique design you can move a certain distance after each auto attack that's kind of cool but you know reading this book it really gives me a new perspective on her like i think she's honestly my favorite character in this book if i'm, I'm i can't even lie like i think she's my favorite character in this book uh like just from how she expresses herself you you get to see her well you get to read of how like how she thinks internally and how she reacts externally i think those are really cool 
Uh, it's very, I wouldn't say slow paced, but it's very grounded to where it's very easy to catch on. Like it's it's not too fast for anybody. Um, I'm pretty sure if anybody reads this, all they really have to make sure they do is make sure they remember uh, what they read before going onto the different POVs for other characters. That's probably the really thing you really got to try with, because uh, sometimes you'll do like two pages for one POV, then go on like 40 pages for one person's POV. So that's really that for Callista. The first four pages, I didn't know this, but it's actually in the point of view of Thresh. Now, in League of Legends, Thresh is this like wraith like dude, scary face, hook and lantern, you know, very intimidating, menacing look, right? In this book, he's just a regular like dude, you know, working for his city. And I guess for their city, they have to like, I guess you could say, put them into a position. So I guess what they do previously in their lifetime leading up to whatever point it was in the beginning of the book uh that basically judges where they get put in life i guess socially like their social uh like hierarchy right so he was very i guess you could say i i keep forgetting the word it's like the bad version of confident i don't know if it's egotistical but he was very full of himself in a way where he thought he was going to be at the best possible, like, uh, spot to be at in their society. And, you know, reading past it, he gets put into, the, like, the lowest fucking tier to where, basically, when he gets put to work, where he's going to be put, he's essentially going to be forgotten. Like, it's a death sentence, essentially, because... Once he goes down there, there's no coming out of it. They're just going to forget about him. He's basically a leech in the society. It, it was interesting to see his downfall mentally because at first he was like, oh my God, I thought I was the best. You know what? I'm going to work very hard and I'm going to push myself to be the very best that I can be so they can see me improve and they'll have to put me in this better position. And we... Later on, because after the first four pages, you go back to Callista for like two to three chapters, and then you come back to him. At that point, he's like, these people are all dead to me. I don't care about them. I just need to survive, and I'm going to do it one way or another. And he even gets to the point because his job is basically like to protect ancient treasures. So what he starts doing is he starts sneaking around and looking at these treasures and studying them. I think in one of the parts in the book, uh, he actually talked about how his superior caught him. They basically looked at each other in shock, and he was like, yo, you're going to go down for this one. And then it just cut, like the point of view. And then it went to Callista, and when he came back, the superiors of that superior contacted Thresh. His name is Erlock Grill, but I'm going to call him Thresh just for simplicity. They called him in for like this meeting, and they were saying, like, have you seen this person? And he was like... Uh, I saw him like last week and they were like, well, he's been missing. And he was like, missing. What happened to him? And then, you know, after the meeting, he goes back to his like uh, area where he's supposed to like be protecting. When he goes on his patrol, he actually goes to a secret part of the uh, area that he's supposed to like be guarding. And he opens a room and that superior that they said was missing is right there. Thresh is a menace. This man was torturing him and killed him. And it turns out his favorite weapon to use was a sickle with chain, which is basically his hook that he uses now in the game. It it's so interesting to see these like things unravel in the book. Cause you don't you don't really like you get surface level information. Like you get like what, three paragraphs worth of like lore information about the character. And then maybe you get like two to three cinematics if you're lucky. So seeing these for these characters was very eye opening to me. Because it's League of Legends. Let's be honest. That game needs to burn in hell. I, I've been stressing this to my friends for like, I don't know how many years now. Everything that Riot Games produce is amazing. It is probably the best thing in media, like, indefinitely. In, in my opinion, I think Riot Games, everything they do is like peak. It. Honestly, I don't even know what other way to put it. It's it's peak. 
except for their games. Their games are so, like, socially regressing. I mean, like, society is moving backwards. Like, we are devolving anytime we interact with a, a Riot Games game. Like, if you've ever played League of Legends or Valorant, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't say much about TFT because honestly, who plays TFT? And Legends of Rune Terra, I mean, it's basically just Magic the Gathering. I mean, I can't really say much about that. Uh, I thought it was a cool concept. I played it like twice. It was all right. I didn't really care about it. But at least there, you don't get the same interactions as you do in League of Legends and Valorant. Now, I'm going to focus on League of Legends for this conversation, but like, bro. What the fuck? I, I mean, like, what else can I... Like, I, I take every possible chance I could get to shit on League of Legends. Because it is... It, it is a cesspool. It's a black hole of just human roaches. Like, I don't, I don't know what else... Like, I don't even know how else to describe it. I, I can't hop into the game or think about it without getting PTSD. Because I literally almost went into mental turmoil the last time I played it. I was grinding ranked. Now, obviously, like, you could search on my profile at any moment. I'm pretty sure I put it somewhere on the internet i played for like what three rank seasons four rank seasons i was progressing slowly every season i was doing better than the last i went through plat promos four times in i think my third or fourth season and i literally lost two to three every time i was pl i was using an elo inflated champ to prove a point to myself I was like, yeah, this champ is ELO inflated. I'm going to use him next season just to prove a point that I could actually get to a higher rank. I got to gold with him, and then the next season, I tried to do the same thing. So I used Kane. Well, first it was Viego, right? And that's how I fell in love with Viego, and that's why I wanted to buy this book. So I fell in love with Viego, so I mained him. And how, what do you know? I got to gold one. I went into my plat promos for the first time, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to end the season here. I'm proud with that. Next season, I went with Kane because he was a little broken. I got to my plat promos four fucking times. 20 kill game constantly, bro. It literally, I think the least amount I got was like 12. It was insane. The excuse is, oh, it's a team game. There's four other people on your team. There's nine other players to worry about. Uh, Elo, Elo Hell doesn't exist. That's bullshit. That's, <laughs> for one thing, that's bullshit. Um, I'm. I'm telling you right now, League of Legends is a game where you can solo carry. It is a game where you can solo carry. And if you can't solo carry, you lost. So I played with that mentality to solo carry every game. And a 30 game lose streak later, dropping down like four ranks, I almost committed. Obviously, that was a joke. Uh, I don't mean to like be little like actual like stuff like that but like dude oh my god i wanted to like physically damage myself like it was insane i i can't even like put into words i literally that area in my memory is so clouded because i don't want to remember it i mean yeah like i said bro like you guys know i was reading uh devil's line then i went to one punch well i didn't tell you guys i picked up uh one punch man again i was i left off like where the anime ended so i picked that back up uh got into like volume 28 29 pretty fucking good and it it's just so happens bro like two weeks three weeks after i fit like catch up with the english uh manga they dropped the season three trailer that shit's amazing but after the one punch man i was like you know what i want to get into more literature i want to read more books longer books so i showed you guys the halo book well i don't know if i re remember showing you that but i got the halo book about the fall of reach and then I got this one. And I'm not going to lie. I think I think it was a very good purchase. Like, if you guys are interested in League of Legends, uh, but you hate the game, I would suggest getting this book. This is a really good book. I mean, there was one day, because uh, I usually read it at work when I'm not busy. Dude, I read through, like, 150 pages. I was just reading for, like, so long. I, 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 I lost track of time. That's how good it was. Like, bro, I haven't even watched anime in so long because I've been reading so much of it. Anyways, I mean, that's all I really got to say. That's my progression with this book. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you should get the book. Ruination book is so good. League of Legends is not so good. If you guys, like, have ever read this book, let me know, like, what you guys think. Because right now I'm at page, I think, 209, chapter 19. It's, it's picking up very quickly.
right now it is at least and i can't wait to read more because Callista's in the blessed isles trying to find something for Isold. so i gotta get into that anyways if you guys enjoyed let me know like comment subscribe all right make sure you guys are safe for this spring coming up it's coming up soon i mean we're already in march which is insane but uh yeah bye